Dios. Estamos en YouTube. Me llamo Yo Moscatielo de Marco Learning. Bienvenidos. Um, I want to welcome you all to today's session. My name is John from Marco Learning. Today is all about AP Spanish language. We're going to do another one of these relatively brief sessions. I'm just going to um, go ahead and make sure that I'm all set up live on YouTube. Um, and it looks like I am. I encourage you in the chat, let me know qué pasa, what questions you have. Hola, Jessica, everyone who's who's coming in and joining. Um, if you like our video, go ahead and press like on this. I want to start right away with what you all need to be doing um, for the AP Spanish language exam. Um, we've had a lot of information come out this past week, um, and I'm just sharing this uh, screen here with you. If you have not yet, download, go now and download this app. This is the sample one, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to actually be using it in today's session and demoing some of it for you. So it's called APWLEA. You can um, just Google WLEA. You see it, World Language Exam App. This is for all the um, exam exams that are not Spanish literature, which was this past week, or Latin, which have nothing to do with this. This is just for um, this uh, program. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. When you go there and you download it, it'll tell you that it's in practice mode and you get it all situated. Some of you have Android devices that are not compatible with this, so make sure that you're following all of the instructions. Um, and so you enter on the exam day, you're going to enter your ID number. You will have the tasks. So if you'll see on my phone here, it's the same. It looks exactly the same. I press the record button. And as I do, and I know it's a super small corner, I can um, be recording things, testing them out, and then I can play. Testing them out. Right? Um, and then I can re-record because I didn't like the, how that came out. The functionality, I have found it very simple. Let me know in the chat how you have found the College Boards app um, in terms of its usefulness and in terms of what's going on. You need to make sure you're comfortable with this. Now, I know there's a lot of reviews, but no one's actually taken the exam yet for this. Um, so I don't know what's happening here. It might, it might, I, well, hopefully it's still up. Um, it's, it's for iPhone and iPad. So remember a couple of things as well. No se puede tomar ese examen en Chromebook, desktop, laptop. You cannot use un ordenador, as we say in Espanol, computadora, as we say in Latin America, to take this exam. It must be an iPhone, iPad, or some other device. Um, you can also see on Google Play. So only the compatible devices for all of you. Also, again, a lot of review, uh, reviews, yes. Que criticas ya tan malos, ha, 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 indeed. Y tienes hambre, go get a snack. Um, you know, it's in, in, in España siempre merendamos. Um, we always have like a little snack and, and cheese and all these sorts of things to go. So again, this app is here. Make sure you download it. Make sure you guys follow all these instructions. AP Coronavirus Updates is the name of the College Board's website. And they have all the information here for everyone who's facing problems. So notice how long is the exam. Um, this is something that, you know, not a lot of people are talking about, but for those of you taking Chinese and, and Japanese, it's 15 minutes and Spanish is 22. Um, it's incredibly short. And so that's why I really want you guys to practice to make sure that you have this functionality set up. You could end up in a lot of trouble if you don't uh, have this familiarity. And yes, Natalia, you can absolutely um, practice um, using this thing. See, I can grabar sobre or a través de este app um, through iStore and practice everything. So really get comfortable with this. You don't have time to make mistakes, guys. The exam, let's just review a couple things about the format of this year's AP Spanish exam. Hay 22 minutos. Hay 3 minutos y 40 segundos para hablar. Esto es todo. That's it. 22 minutes in total. They're going to read the instructions multiple times. It's only going to be audio. So think about like, okay, is this a re reliable system for you? Um, are you going to do it on speakerphone? Do you have to take this in a car somewhere offsite? Are you taking this in a quiet part of your apartment or house? It's really tricky, I know, for a lot of people to get access to a good Wi-Fi stream, good um, stuff. So make sure that you've really thought that part through before the actual exam. Um, and that you, uh, you're really ready to deal with the velocity of this exam. La velocidad, como digamos en España, because um, it's super high speed. Um, now, I know that makes a lot of people nervous, but what I want to do is, 
want you to think about whether or not you're going to have headphones in and be operating on a phone and maybe working on a computer, you're allowed to do that, or whether you're more likely to have the headphones in. So I'll put my headphones in, for example, just to get through the vibes of this, go through the ritual. This is a way to reduce um, being anxious. So I get my headphones in, I plug it up into my phone, detangle before exam day, um, and I get all situated. And then what I'm gonna do is have my sheet of paper right at the ready where I'm keeping all of my notes. And as it's giving me instructions, I'm able to quickly write things down. So whether it's the conversation part, which again will be five 20 second um, uh, segments, just like it always is, followed by the two minute uh, presentation, la presentación oral se puede preparar aquí en papel. And that can give you some confianza, some seguridad as you go through the exam. Okay, um, so el ritual, okay. Um, Yes, but practicing only English on the app. Um, oh, Rosa, wow, me encanta este, wow, thank you, uh, my Spanish pronunciation. I lived in Spain for a year, en el año 2012, um, estudiando la historia medieval de España. Yo soy historiador y uh, yo he, en la universidad de NYU, um, en la literatura española fue mi con concentración y me encanta la literatura de Todo el mundo hispanohablante. On my exam, I'm going to be talking about Spain because it's the it's the, a part of the mundo hispanohablante that I know. So when you think about Spain, one thing that's nice about it, and I think Spain or Mexico or Cuba, Peru, um, a culture where there's a lot of stuff in Spanish textbooks is an easy starting point. It's a very common question I get, like, what do I talk about? Um, start with just, if you can, between now and the exam, which is only a few days away, Talk about one of those um, uh, countries as a as a way into celebraciones, is a way into fiestas, comida, la vida diaria, um, uh, histori uh, historia, uh, literatura, cultura, tecnología. There's stuff going on in Mexico that's just different from Argentina that that can really get it. So, like if I talk about las pampas de Argentina, that could be a really interesting cultural example um, that would be very different from. Um, you know, Andalucía and El Sur de España. So just grab onto something that you know if you don't. Um, and Tom's asking, what if you're a non-native speaker that can't speak Spanish? Tom, trust your best instinct. This is not, you do not get rewarded for just being a native speaker. I'm gonna show you some of the samples from the College Board's website that I want you guys to study from. You can see there that there are native speakers who perform poorly on this exam because they're not really listening to the questions, they're not really answering the questions, they're not playing the game well to get points. And there are non-native speakers with like super bad American accents that actually like do pretty well because, you know, while you're graded on that, it's sort of like if you, if, if you go through this and you're like, yo me llamo John, yo soy de los Estados Unidos, yo estoy hablando espanol por examen espanol, muy bien hecho, right? Like that, actually can work. I would love for you to try for a richer Spanish accent, but um, you can do something um, good enough that answers the question and gets the job done. So set a nice low bar. Um, yes, and what do you, yeah, some of you are doing this. Oh, all the, all the praise for my Spanish. My mom would love you uh, for that. My mom always loved that I like Spanish. I was obsessed with getting a Spanish accent. I started when I was uh, 13 years old, so I didn't learn any foreign languages growing up. You can do it, you can keep improving. Um, so a couple things I wanna do. I wanna take you all to a very important website, which is the College Board. Um, Okay, so if you go to the College Board's website, just Google AP Spanish, AP Central, you can go scroll down, blah, 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 all this stuff about the format of the exam, LOL, that's not going to be the actual exam this year, um, because they cut out all of it, and they've really only left you with this. Again, they've published that it will be 22 minutes in total. It will be 100% of your score. You're going to have the interpersonal speaking, which is five exchanges in a, in a simulated conversation. Guys, it ain't a conversation. It's super awkward. Those of you who've practiced this well before know that it's like, you know, ¿Cuál es tu color favorito? And then you're like, mi color favorito es azul. And you just, it's just fakery. So your job is to just hit the answers as best you can with a nice full response. So it's not perfectionism. It's not my Spain Spanish accent. It's none of this. You Now, again, you're not going to be given print content. You're, everything's going to be received um, through your headphones or on speakerphone this year through the app. 
Then the presentational speaking is also the same. It's two minutes. You should structure it around three points of comparison. It will be, com it will be a comparison between uh, a, a cultural feature of a Spanish speaking community with which they are, you are familiar and your own community or another community. So the best thing to do, I think, is talk about your own world and one specific country that you studied in class. Um, and again, I really strongly encourage you guys get ahead of all this nonsense for, uh, well, this is actually not for this year's exam, all of this. Now, I want to get to the um, cultural comparison from the 2019 exam. And this is really great because we can actually re, I played in last week's um, session, which I encourage you guys, we have two more videos on AP Spanish language on our website where I do similar things. But I want to just, um, uh, take a minute and look at how you're being assessed because it won't um, it won't help you as much. And you know what? I'm gonna um, real quick, um, yeah. And you know what? I'm gonna see if one of the moderators can find this link and put it in the chat for you guys. Um, and I'm just looking at some of the responses here. Um, it's great to see you again, by the way, Jake. Angel is saying, anyone else kind of sad that we don't get to experience the full exam, but also at the same time feel lucky we don't need to do it at all. So, amen, right? Because there are, there's, it's, it's sort of like if you have a good few minutes of talking, you can overperform. Um, there's a little more pressure on you to perform in that time, and that's the part I'm concerned about. Um, and so. Uh, Parnica, yes, and welcome back. I understand the questions, but sometimes for cultural comparison and conversation, I don't know things about the topic. How can I study them and learn more? Definitely, guys, look for, and I wish we had more on our channel, but not yet. Um, look for information um, about the history and culture of Spain. And, and let me ask you guys in the chat, um, those of you who've been in AP Spanish, what societies and cultures have you studied? Have you done anything about uh, Guatemala or Peru or Puerto Rico. Do you know personally about one of these places? Um, yes, it's. I'm glad that you guys like this. So let me know in the chat which countries you're planning to use. Um, and just remember that there are some just, you know, general things. A lot of, for example, in the United States, a lot of us know about and are familiar with certain aspects of Spanish, of uh, Mexican culture, right? So we could talk about Mexican food pretty well, I guess. We could talk about Dia de los Muertos, El Cinco de Mayo. We can talk about um, Yucatan. We can talk about the history of Tenochtitlan. We could talk about, um, you know, parts of of actually. You could talk also about the Spanish-speaking communities of the United States with which you're familiar. Ecuador, muy bien. Um, me encanta Ecuador. So you can talk about Chile, um, whichever place you know. Just stay. Don't try to like innovate on test day. Um, and, and seriously, look at, let's look at how specific people get. It's not a knowledge test. So, um, so students' responses are quoted verbatim and may contain grammatical errors in the transcripts of student speeches quoted in the commentary. So these are real student samples from last year's exam. Three dot ellipses indicates that the sample has been excerpted. Two dots indicates that the student paused. So there's a difference. Two dots is pause. Three dots is an excerpt. Um, the task assess speaking on the presentational communicative mode by having the student make a comparative oral presentation on a cultural topic. Four minutes to read. So they're going to repeat it to you. They're going to have four minutes, prepare the presentation, two minutes to deliver. Holistic score. Holistic means you're going to be scored overall, overall vibes that you give off. So speaking a lot and in a highly structured way and in the best Spanish accent you have is the best chance you've got. Um, based on uh, the presentation, had to compare the student's own community to the Spanish speaking world. The presentation had to be organized clearly. Here's where native speakers be careful. Ten cuidado, because if you trust your own self, you're like, I got, I got a perfect Spanish accent. Forget all of you, and your your response is a garbled mess. It's not going to help you. Um, okay, so uh, the course theme for the cultural comparison was families and communities. Prompt asked students to compare how housing type affects lifestyle. And I think we've reviewed this one before, but let's take a look at this response. So somebody had to compare in two minutes, housing type affecting the lifestyle of people in their own community. Let's read this response. Las viviendas afectan el estilo de vida en una manera muy profunda. En los Estados Unidos hay muchos edificios y casas y es un sitio muy urbano. Por esa razón, siempre estamos muy juntos y nos conocemos bien. Pero además de eso, siempre estamos en carros o estamos sedentarios en las casas o edificios, entonces no somos muy físicos. 
So what a great opening to the response. Houses affect the style of life in a very profound way. In the United States, there's many buildings and houses, and it's a very urban place. For this reason, we are always very together and we do not, oh no, we are always very together and we know each other well. But in addition to this, we are always in cars or sedentary in houses or buildings. Therefore, we are not very physical or we're not very, um, what's the word? Physicos. Um, um, wait, and I just, yeah, I'm looking at, uh, looking at some of the responses here. So yeah, your responses, it's not necessarily a historical skills, but notice this person has just said a lot of general stuff about life in America. Um, so, um, you know, you don't want to get it like wild. You don't want to make up stuff completely, but it's more about getting a good response than like ha being his perfect and even perfect with everything that you say. Um, so the person identified specific ways that the sedentary and urban lifestyles change how Americans um, live and work. Eso causa que nosotros seamos usualmente sobre peso y con no comamos bien si no intentamos hacer una actividad física fuera de nuestro control. control. Uh, pero en Colombia hay villas, villas y fincas cuales son muy grandes y son muy rurales. Por esa razón, Ellos tienen gran ganado y tienen gran, granjas que ellos pueden usar para su propia comida y por esa razón ellos tienen comida muy saludable. So I've got these very specific things about Colombian houses, right? Where people are they're more rural, they grow their own food um, and that they have a very healthy food uh, food culture as a result. Entonces, ellos tienen, notice these transition words, entonces, por esa razón, pero además de eso, and if you go, when you guys go through the sample responses, watch this, topic sentence, en los Estados Unidos, además de eso, uh, pero en Colombia, so, en los Estados Unidos, I dot, 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 pero en Colombia, I dot, dot, dot. That's a really smart structure. That's why this person got a perfect score on this out, out of thing. It's not a perfect response, but it's structured really nicely. Um, entonces, therefore, then, ellos tienen que caminar muchas distancias y tienen que hacer trabajo para que ellos puedan sostener su finca o vida. Además de eso, ellos pueden Está muy cerca. Ellos, ellos tienen que ir muchas distancia, distancias para poder verse unos a otros. Y si no son de familia, pero si son de familia, siempre tienen una interacción muy cercana y se soporta mucho. You guys don't have to be perfect. Look at this person. This person has a big mess right here in the response. Still gets a perfect score. Perfect is not perfect. Perfect is good enough. Um, and let's just take a look at how this, what the, what the readers say. I'm always obsessed with this. A lot of people don't look at this enough to know why scores are getting what they are. So I'm going to read it out loud. This response reflects a strong performance in presentational speaking. There's an effective treatment of the topic. The response clearly compares, right? That clear comparison, por, pero en Colombia, por esa razón, really, really clear. Um, it makes the connection between the effects of housing on people's lives, their physical activity, eating habits, um, and they give the examples. It's an organized presentation, effective use of transitional elements. These are the ones I identified or earlier. You could even have these marked down. Por esa razón, en los Estados Unidos, no, no somos muy físicos, the person said, right? There is an accuracy and variety and grammar and varied and appropriate vocabulary. Es un sitio muy urbano. Tienen que ir muchas distancias para poder verse unos a otros. The presentation is fully understandable with ease and clarity of expression. Occasional errors do not impede comprehensibility. Seamos usualmente sobre peso y con no comamos bien. I was a little confused by this too doesn't matter. They're going to let you be imperfect. They're going to let you be who you are. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, here's a score of three. Um, 
And by the way, th those of you who are just joining, let me know in the chat what you need me to talk about. We're talking about how to grab on the specific things, how to structure your responses for the Presentación Oral de Spanish Language. And if you like this video, press like. Always stay in touch with us at Marco. Um, we're going to be hosting lots of lives and, and lots of um, events. I'm going to go live for AP Spanish on our Instagram channel as well. It's super fun. Here's this one. Um, OK, here's this person. Um, and this is a three out of five. Hola, clase, right? Like, boom, um, it's a class presentation. I'm going to do hola, clase. Hola, clase. Hoy voy a hablar sobre cómo el tipo de vivienda afecta el estilo de vida de personas en mi comunidad en Virginia y en una comunidad hispanohablante, Puerto Rico. That's actually a nice little opening. El estilo de vida en Puerto Rico es muy diferente que en Virginia. En Puerto Rico, dot, dot, especialmente desde el URA, Dot, dot, huracán María, las personas salvan agua mucho y están, dot, dot, muy, dot, dot, tienen mucho cuidado con su uso de agua y también no, casi todos, todas las casas no tienen aire, aire condicionario como en Virginia y también las casas son pequeñitas también. Um, en Virginia, las casas son más grandes y casi nadie no le importa el uso de agua porque tenemos mucho acá y hay aire acondicionario en todas las casas. Um, el estilo de vida en Puerto Rico no afecta a las personas tanto porque son perices y son personas que no le importa porque saben que su vida es muy buena y no necesitan esas cosas para su vida. En... Y en Virginia las personas son felices también porque no saben otra cosa. Es, gracias por escuchar a mi presentación y adiós. Gracias por escuchar y espero que puedo hablar contigo otra vez sobre mi presentación de Virginia, Puerto Rico. Okay, this is too much of this bookended stuff. This didn't really help. Let's see um, the grading of this. Um, it says, um, and by the way, to question Luis just asked, are you able to use your notes? Absolutely. You. This is an open book, open note exam. You can use whatever you want in front of you. What you cannot do is collaborate with other people or copy and paste other stuff. This response reflects a fair performance in presentational speaking. So like not that great, three out of five. There's a suitable treatment of the topic within the context of the task, okay? So like the person's on topic, the response compares both communities, Virginia and Puerto Rico. A few details here. The response is generally understandable with errors that may impede comprehensibility. Yeah, I got lost in this, what? a little bit of a hot mess, but that's okay. You don't need to be perfect. This is a very good score, three to five on the presentational task. There is some control of grammar. Um, the vocabulary is appropriate, but basic. Tienen mucho cuidado. Las casas son pequeñitas. Su vida es muy buena. Um, look for those, those more specific words. One brainstorming exercise in your four minutes is to think about specific vocabulary. Remember, like talking about the Huracan Maria is specific to Puerto Rico, but notice in our five example, let's look at some of the words that the person used. Uh, let's say, um, por esa razón ellos tienen un gran ganado y tienen granjas que ellos pueden usar para su propia comida. Fincas, vías y fincas. Um, let's see. Siempre tienen una interacción muy cercana y se soporta mucho. This is more sophisticated in style um, than this. Um, pronunciation and annotation make this responsible generally comprehensible. So this is where, again, it comes in as a finishing factor. Um, okay. Uh, I mean, it's really mean to look at the two, but let's just look at it real quick. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing out loud, but I'll read part of it. Hola. Voy a hablar sobre el tema de cómo afecta el tipo de vivienda en estilo en comunidad. Uh, OK. Los EEUU en España. Empezar en los EEUU es súper más rápido. Siempre la gente está conduciendo coches. Hecho, da, 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 da. Espero, por el otro lado en España, es súper más tranquilo. Hay más gente que camina más que conducí a... Y eso crea una comunidad, una cultura que es más tranquila últimamente y también sirve crear y aborrar la urgencia de hacer cosas como es en los EEUU. Pero bueno, do, los dos culturas están bien 
No hay problemas con pues ninguno. Pero bueno, es importante que, que vemos. This is a little bit of filibustering, guys. This is making up stuff. Um, yeah, and that, Rosa, is really great advice. Don't waste so much time, like, rifling through notes. You only got four minutes. You have to, it's so fast that you have to move quickly. Open book, open note is a trap. I actually talk about that in a video on our channel about, like, why, like, you got to be careful about this. Um, and then this little filler talk at the end isn't helping. It's a weak performance, unsuitable treatment. It compares, so there's a comparison. It's a cultural comparison between lifestyles about the general pace, not about the topic of housing. So you want those that language. The response is comprehensible, the vocabulary is acceptable, and there is control of grammar. However, the content does not provide. So this person misfired because this person did not directly address the topic at hand. That's the best advice I can give you guys. Structure your response very specifically around um, exactly what the task is asking for. So let's take a look at this task again. Um, and if I can, I'll go down to four here. So, ¿cómo afecta el tipo de vivienda al estilo de vida de las personas en tu comunidad? How does the type of house, uh, how, does the, how does the type of house affect the style of life of people in your community? And then, you know, again, you're gonna, your instructions will be in, in English and Spanish, so don't worry about all of that. Um, okay, and yeah, and, and to the point about sentence stems, guys, I wanna say this. Um, the most important thing, I mean, you, the, your teacher may have given you some templates, some structures about this. The most important thing is you have the right things to help structure and fuel a conversation rather than like some script about something else. You could read a really great script about the wrong topic and get a one or two that you deserve. Um, you've got to use that language. You want to think of specific things. Um, and that's what we saw in some of these responses. Fincas in Colombia. Um, la Casa Privada de los Estados Unidos, even the response to Huracan Maria in Puerto Rico could have been really good. You could say, the, uh, talk about small houses, many of which were unfortunately destroyed and ran out of resources in Puerto Rico, um, that helped. So, and definitely, Rosa, the T-chart, just a simple like plus sign thing could give you a really clean response, two or three things. So uh, notice in that first response we saw, por esa razón, um, uh, you know, al otro lado, podemos ver en Colombia que las casas, dot, 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 and you fill in whatever that difference is. Um, remember that language, guys, is spoken in spurts. You've even heard me do it here, that nobody speaks, even as I'm speaking English, I speak in these bursts of words, and then I pause. Let yourself pause. A lot of people feel like they need to speak in one unbroken chain, and it holds them back. Um, so, Let's see. Now, Natalia is asking, so when it doesn't give us a specific place or something to compare, they're going to say, and I'll pull it back up here, they're going to say, en tu presentación, compara tu propia comunidad con una región del mundo hispanohablante que te sea, fami que, que te sea familiar. So it's going to be really wide open. Your own community or a, a, and actually it's here in English too, part of the Spanish speaking world with which you are familiar. And the Spanish speaking world could be your own community, but I like, it's really nice to just set up one of these contrasts between your world, wherever that might be, and something else. So it's it's setting up that dynamic. So listen, this has been a very short overview. I hope this has been somewhat helpful for you. Again, I wanna encourage you all, go to the app store now and download up this app. It is gonna be your best friend. You can only practice in English, but it's really useful as a way to just get the software sorted out. You don't wanna have software problems on testing. Um, and Jake, about printing off of this, I don't think that's an option because my understanding guys, if I have this right, um, the um, is I, I think that uh, the printing process is not possible because it's gonna be audio only. Everything's gonna be transmitted through audio. You're not gonna have textual prompts in front of you. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong about that, but that was my last understanding of this, the, of this app. So listen, I hope that this session has been useful for you. I wish you the best of luck. Que tengas buena suerte en el examen. Follow us on Instagram on here. I'm gonna be going live again. We're gonna be putting out some more content for Spanish. I'm gonna practice. I'm gonna to try to get some more videos up soon, as well as some more lives, where we'll go through and do some of these together. Um, so um, seriously, best of luck to you all. Stay in touch with us. And I hope that everything runs smoothly.